We're going to give a short demonstration of how to set cam timing. Uh, this particular motor we'll be working on today is a 2006 GSXR 750. Um, Suzuki production parts have a cam sprocket that is a non-adjustable part that presses on the end of the stick. That is removed and a adjustable, in this case APE, available from APE adjustable cam sprocket is used. You can see the flange itself is separated by the sprocket and is um, adjustable by uh, means of two bolts. When it's pressed onto the camshaft, it would look like that. Um, that allows us the freedom to set cam timing very accurately to alter the uh, characteristics of the motor or make sure we don't have any mechanical problems when using a larger than stock set of cams in a performance engine, um, altering uh, where we make the power. If uh, you're using in particularly low lobe center numbers to make a lot of mid-range power for a road race bike or a lot of uh, high lobe center uh, when we set the cams, using that to make a peak power uh, higher for a drag engine possibly. Um, we start by setting what's called a degree wheel. Um, this, um, in this particular instance, is on the left side of the motor. Um, we have a dial indicator with a, uh, it's actually a piece of coat hanger wire. The dial indicator is resting on the top of the crown of the piston. We rotate it to where it comes up to top dead center, rotating in the normal direction that the motor rotates to find top dead center here, and then we use this degree wheel with a small indicator, this just happens to be a piece of lock wire, use something that's rigid and once this is set, don't touch the right side of the motor or this side of the motor uh, until you're done with all your cam timing information. We find top dead center because the cam position is relative to pis piston position and crankshaft position is what dictates where the piston is in its relative position. So the next thing we do is take the dial indicator uh, piece out, again this is kit coat hanger wire, so have to have the kit parts in use. We're going to time the exhaust cam first because it is the first cam that is pulled by the chain. We get this to rest on uh, the lobe. This is actually a part available from Snap-on. Uh, the is a piece of. Uh, it's actually a tool for using checking runout on ball joints. You get it so it rests directly on the bucket itself. Tighten everything back down. Thing to do what I want it to do. Have a little bit of preload on the cam. You can see the tip of this is up a little bit. We'll get it centered and then we'll zero. Get this thing tight down. We'll get this to zero. And we'll measure our opening numbers and our closing numbers. The opening numbers and the closing numbers together will give us a full circle of information. In this particular case, this is on the intake cam, when the valve was opened, we run the valve open at 40 thousandths or one millimeter. The opening number was 22 and a half. We came past top dead center and all the way down to the bottom. That's where we pick up the 180 degrees in this, this uh, small equation we're going to use. We use intake opening plus 180 plus intake closing. This total number happens to be 250. 22 and a half plus 180 plus 47 and a half is 250. That number is divided by 2, and you subtract on the intake cam, you subtract the opening number, which is 22 and a half. This particular set of numbers yields a lobe center of 102.5. After this is done, and we'll go through this measurement on the motor here in just a minute, after this is done, we also check valve to piston clearance. This is done on the intake cam at 10 degrees after top dead center. Again, this is valve to piston check. Most manufacturers recommend 40 thousandths at a, as a minimum on the intake cam and 70 thousandths as an exhaust. Below that, you're pretty much exploring uncharted territory and uh, I know people that do that, it's, they're pretty much experimenting with what the limits of the motors are. Again, 20, or 40 thousandths on the intake and 70 thousandths on the exhaust. This is just showing the, uh, in a schema or diagram like this, what the, the numbers are coming from. The opening number plus the 180 from top to bottom plus the 47 where it closes after here total 250, divide by 2, equals 125, minus the opening number. Again, I'm referencing the intake cam, because on the exhaust, it's the closing number that's used. Again, 22 and a half, our lobe center on this particular cam, with this particular setup, is 102.5. I've already done this, and we'll go through this in a minute, but we use a tool that's made available through Yoshimura on the Suzuki product line to pry the valve open. 
We literally pry it open to where the valve and piston touch each other, the valve being moved. In this instance, this is 35 thousandths valve to piston clearance with this setup. I will actually go through the, the uh, measurements right now. On this exhaust cam, again, we measure at one millimeter of lift, which is 40 thousandths. It's coming open right now to 40 thousandths. Then we check our degree wheel. This particular cam opens at 42 degrees. This is the exhaust cam. So we have 40, 42 degrees for the opening number on the exhaust cam, plus the closing number, plus 180 equals a number. Let's see what that is. The cam is going to run all the way through its opening cycle and back come closed. Check my number is good there. We'll go back to 40. Always using the direction of rotation as our normal way to pull the chain. That's exactly one millimeter before closing. Our number here now is four. So in this equation, we have an opening of 42 plus 4 plus 180. If I turn the calculator on, 42 plus 4 plus 180. There we go. 42 plus 4 plus 180 equals 226. Divide by 2 is 113 minus 4. This has a lobe center of 109. This motor is going to be used as a land speed uh, bike, and a high lobe center in this case is going to give a little bit more uh, top end power, which is where we want to bias the power on this particular motor. In the scheme of things here, lower lobe center numbers are going to cause tighter valve to piston clearance. And again, the 70 on the exhaust side is our, our normal limit, 0 0.070 thousandths. On the intake, we're going to run this lobe center number down here in this particular motor. This one's going to be at 102.5. Again, lower lobe centers mean tighter valve to piston clearance, better chance of valve to piston collisions. We want to keep that to a minimum. We don't want to damage the motors. So we'll go actually backwards. I showed you a minute ago that the valve to piston check is going to be done, done at 10 degrees before top dead center on this exhaust cam. So we're at 10, here's top dead center. This is 10 degrees before. We use our valve, de valve uh, depressing tool. It's actually stuck in between the heel of the cam and the bucket itself. And we pull this valve open, literally prying it open. We're pushing against the valve spring. Get my hand in here. Pressing against the valve spring. This one's in excess of 100 thousandths. So we're very, very safe on this. I could run a lower lobe center number if I wanted to. But in this case, I'm trying to build peak power. So this one's in excess of 100 thousandths. That's way on the safe side. 70 being the minimum on the exhaust side. Now, we know that one's good. We don't have to adjust that anymore. We're going to go back and undo the intake side. Again, this tool is a piece that's made uh, by a number of different companies. This particular one is a snap-on or blue point tool uh, made for doing, it's a ball joint run-out tool. It's an automotive tool, but the articulated arm like that really makes it easy and the vice grip clamp on the end, you can adapt that to just about anything. All right. uh, we're going to roll it back so that the, the cam has not opened the valve yet. And over here you can see the nose of the cam is up a little bit higher. The area, I'll use a pointer here, the base circle of the cam is where the, uh, the nose is not started lifting at all. This being the nose of the cam, that's going to lift up. We're going to set our dial indicator to zero. And we'll start rotating again the normal direction of rotation. We want this to come open 40 thousandths to get our measurement. There's 40 thousandths. We check our measurement on this side on the dial indicator. Again, this is very important not to touch the dial indicator while this whole thing is happening. This gives us a number of 24. We go all the way through the opening. I'm going to rotate backwards. And then again forward into the closing number. That's 40 thousandths. All right, so our number before was 24. The closing number is 10, 20, 30, 40, 9. So if we add those numbers, 
this over here. 24 and 49 and 180. 49 plus 24 plus 180. Total is 2. 253. Divide by 2 equals 126.5 minus 24. Use a, a lobe center of 102.5, which is what we got before. Our numbers were slightly different from before. If you're within one number, usually that's very, very close. Uh, if you can get repeatability, repeatability down to one. Um, 102 lobe center, we have the same number on this. Now we're going to do valve to piston on this one as well. And I said on the intake valve, it's checked at 10 degrees after top dead center. So we're going to run through, make sure this is zeroed. My dial indicator is moving a little bit. I'm going to come open just to check our number. We go back here again at one millimeter. It is 24 thousandths. We're before top dead center right now, so we're going to go through the top dead center mark there and go 10 degrees after top dead center. That's why I want to check my valve to piston clearance at. All right, I'm going to zero my dial indicator in that position. I'm going to use the tool to pry it open. And I want to have this, this should be, the normal is, is 40. I'm going to be a little bit uh, above that, or a little bit below that. This one's about 36 right now using this tool to pry open. You can see it stops just a tick over 36 thousandths. That's a little bit under what I consider normal. We're going to take a chance on this one, see if we can't do some land speed numbers with this thing. 36 thousandths. We're able to check that again and again. All right. When you're done making your adjustments on the side where the sprocket is, you should put blue Loctite, a small amount of, this is a green locking agent, but a blue Loctite on the bolts when they're out and then torque them in this particular sprocket set. These go to 20 foot-pounds. Check the manufacturer manual. That's something we use constantly at the shop here. If there's any deviation from that, always consult the manual or the manufacturer of the sprocket. Um, that basically concludes the whole thing. Uh, the last thing we do is when we're doing a tensioner on these things, we use an aftermarket billet-style tensioner. Um, this particular one is made by us at KWS Motorsports. APE makes a good selection of them as well. The, uh, the tensioner itself should be run in until it's completely tight. There's no slack. Back off one half turn or 180 degrees when you're done. Lock the jam nut down. That's the tensioning procedure. It's difficult to do in the frame. It's better to do them when they're out like this. Um, preceding this whole valve adjustment procedure, we did do a um, cam timing uh, procedure. We did do a valve adjustment check. We set the lash before this was done. I'm literally ready to bolt the valve cover back on, put this motor back in the frame, and take it to the dyno now. Going back to this point here, we just did the intake cam. Again, uh, the numbers were slightly different than this, but using this as a base number again, the intake cam on this motor opened at 22 and a half. We check our valve to piston check on this one. It was at 0.036 thousandths, and that's literally prying the valve open with that tool. And this is a Suzuki tool made by Yoshimura. This gets pried open. The 10 degrees after top center, top dead center mark, uh, was 36 thousandths. That's acceptable for what we're doing here. To get our numbers, again, total, we add the in intake opening number plus the 180 plus the 47 and a half. That's our equation. Comes out to 250 divided by 2. On this, on the intake cam, it's you, you subtract the opening number. On the exhaust cam, it's the flip of this because it's a mirror. You would subtract the closing number when it's, it opens this side, goes through the 180 and closes over here. This measurement from here to here when both cams are open is what people refer to as overlap. When both valves are actually open, there's very little chamber pressure in here. That concludes the, the whole thing.